So back on Saturday, I believe, I did a video where I look at all the team that finished dead last in their respective conference for the past 10 season, and look how they did the very next year. And today, I'm going to kind of do the opposite. I'm going to look at all the team that finished top of the respective conference and look at the last 10 season and how they did the very next year. And believe it or not, just like when I made that video looking at teams that finished dead last and you know looking at whether or not if they improved or not, some teams were able to improve and some teams kind of stay to be a team that is mediocre or being at, at the bottom of their respective conference. And likewise here, in terms of looking at these teams that finished first, in each of the past 10 seasons some teams the very next year they stay at that top of the level and then some teams just kind of completely fall off the map and we start off with the first team and you notice how I put SS next to some of these team names that basically stands for supporter shield and in 2012 it was the San Jose Earthquakes that won the supporter shield and you probably have heard me talk a lot about the the 2012 San Jose Earthquakes team also known as the Goonies team and a team that you know nowadays it, it started to look more like a fluke season with the way that the quakes had so many late comeback and so many late goals to carry them to winning the supporter show i mean that i think out of all of these 10 supporter show winner i'm pretty sure you could say that the quakes probably won the supporter show the most flukiest out of those 10 teams but the very next season, you know, it kind of just shows you that the Quakes weren't as good as you thought they were. And they were really just relying on those late goal magic. And once those kind of gone in the very next season, they didn't make it to the playoffs. They finished sixth in the very next season. And then in the Eastern Conference, yes, Sporting KC won the Eastern Conference that year. And this is before SKC moved to the Western Conference. And oh, I forgot what year they moved to the Western Conference. I believe it's 2015 when they moved to the Western Conference because I think when the NYCFC and Orlando City went into MLS, uh, they had to move Sporting KC back to the Western Conference because then, you know, they're, they're adding two new Eastern Conference team and that would just already make make it it's super unbalanced if, if you add two Eastern Conference team along side with like there's like going to be like three more eastern conference team than western conference team but that season they finished top and the very next year they actually w went on to finish second in the eastern conference and we know that that was also the year next season when they went finished second they w went on to win mls cup uh now in 2013 we got the portland timbers finished top of the western conference and i believe that was the year when diego valeri was signed for the Portland Timbers and and Lou did we know that he turns out to be a generational talent for the the Timbers and becomes such a legend of the club but the beginning of his his time with the Timbers definitely started off off well and oh by the way you know I'm definitely going to to hope to do a Diego Valeri career video in MLS I have so many career videos that I I've been backstocking lately and I'm definitely going to try to get some of them done maybe in next week i'll finally do a career video that i been wanted to do for a long time it's been way overdue and that of course is talk about the mls go king chris wanlowski and his career in mls but nevertheless in valeri's first year and during that 2013 season the portland timbers finished first but the very next year they definitely did not have a good season they actually finished six in the Western Conference and miss out on the playoffs. So already for, for the first two teams that we mentioned that finished top in the Western Conference, yeah, they didn't make it to the playoffs the, the very next year. And on the other side, it was the New York Red Bulls finishing first and winning supporter show and the first of what would be free supporter show that they would made. And they actually finished first place four out of their, their next six season. But the very next year, they kind of went, went uh, a little bit bit of a down season though they still made it to the playoffs finishing fourth in the eastern conference then we move on to 2014 and it was the seattle sounders winning the supporter show and you gotta say that was probably one of the best seattle sounders i've seen i mean i think that was the year when they had Opa me martins and clint dempsey in, in that front line and it, it was probably one of the most explosive front line in that that front line kind of compared to the front line that that the la galaxy had back in 2014 with beckham and robbie king but the very next year, they would actually had a bit of a down season, though they did make it to the playoffs the very next year as they finished fourth in the standings. And then in the Eastern Conference, uh, this is a team that I've mentioned before before in my video on Saturday. DC United becoming one of the few teams to have the, the classic narrative of fin going from 
from last to first after finishing last in 2013. They went on to have the best record in 2014. And then the very next year, they would make it to the playoffs again, finishing fourth in the 2015 season. Then we get to the 2015 season, and this is when I will talk about both the 2015 and 2016 season because this is, I mean, the only time where we actually had, had repeats in terms of terms of teams that finish at the top of the standings in two consecutive years because in 2015 with FC Dallas finishing top of the Western Conference they would do it again the very next year whereas the New York Red Bulls of course winning the Supporters Shield uh, that season they went on to win to finish first though the very next year it was kind of like the opposite where you know the Red Bulls won the Supporters Shield and it seems like like they were so kind that they're just going to give it to FC Dallas the very next season. By the way, I also remember in 2015, that Sabora Shield race was very close. Like, both Dallas and the Red Bulls finished with identical goal points total and identical record. And I think the only difference was actually actually goal difference, which the Red Bulls had a much superior goal difference than FC Dallas. But in 2016, although it was, it was close once again, I think the Red Bulls were only three points behind FC Dallas for that Sabora Shield race. Uh, Dallas was once again, uh, or Dallas was able to to get the supporter shield. Though the very next year, yeah, you do not want to. If you're a Dallas fan, you do not want to remember what happened in 2017, and it's something I also mentioned a lot on my cha channel of the the infamous 2017 FC Dallas team, a team that were looked like was going to finish first for the third consecutive year, and then they just went on a cult collapse in the second half of the season and missed out on the playoffs on decision day finishing seventh place whereas for the new york red bulls they also almost missed out on the playoffs uh though they finished six in the eastern conference and one of the last team to make it uh to the playoffs in the eastern conference then in 2017 we have the portland timbers once again finished first place in the western conference and um, that i think was coming out off of a year when when the timbers missed out out on the playoffs and this was I believe the first season that Giovanni Savarisi was coaching this team and what a great first year that he has I mean first first season he was able to guide this team back to being at, at the the top of the standings though the very next year they did finish fifth in the Western Conference but that was also the year they made an MLS Cup run and ultimately losing to to Atlanta United then you got Toronto FC, who, I mean, we all, we remember their, the 2017 TFC team. Like, the 2017 TFC team, if I ever go into make a video to looking at the best team ever in MLS history, the 2017 TFC team is going to go down in history. Like, that was a team with Javinko, Altidore, Bradley, and all those, those uh, it was it was literally a powerhouse team. Like, it, 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 was, it was a team, that I, I even say that maybe that, that team is considered the best team ever ever in MLS history because that team almost become the first ever MLS team to win the treble, winning MLS Cup supporter shield. I mean, in some way, they kind of won uh, a domestic treble because, you know, they won the Canadian Championship and the supporter shield at MLS Cup. But, you know, I think we can all agree that the real treble is for them to winning MLS Cup, um, Canadian Championship, and also the CONCACAF Champions League. And they came so close in, in, in that and becoming the first ever ever MLS team to do so. In fact, I think to the to this day, I think TFC came the, the closest out of any team to to win it. Because while LAFC, you know, they didn't made it to CCL five, you no, know, uh, back in in twenty twenty when they were playing against Tigres, uh, TFC actually went into to extra your time. Well, uh, they actually went to a PK shot. I forgot that there was there was no extra time in in the CCL final and they they went to a pk sh shootout which unfortunately they came on the wrong end of the pk shot whereas lafc didn't even get to the pk shot so if you want to count it as that way they actually went the fur furthest of any team to do all lifting the the concave champions league trophy and become the first team to do so but the very next year we know how that was just just a beginning of all a downfall of, of such a good TFC team and the, and the team that also so was kind of paid the price of going for a long long deep CCL run just never able to recover from it and finish ninth in the standings then the very next year we have Sporting KC that fit, finished first in the standings but then the very next year yeah this was similar to TFC where they were prioritized CCL a lot and they just never kind of recovered from them finish 11th in the standings and in fact they were kind of the biggest difference in terms of the team that finished uh, at the top of the standings to dramatically finish way outside of the playoff picture. 
Though, uh, in 2018, you got the New York Red Bulls, of course, winning the Supporters Shield, and they, they even won up TFC in terms of the most points ever in a regular season at that point. But then the very next year, you know, like they, they did in, in 2016, they didn't have a very good good year the very next season, though they still made it to the playoffs as as the sixth seed and finished sixth in the very next season. Then in 2019, we got LAFC, who of course beat the New York Red Bulls in terms of, of the all-time time points record back, back then winning the Supporters' Shield. But then the very next year, just like the New York Red Bulls, things kind, kind of went through a down, downturn in the team. Team, no doubt, I think, think it was one of the biggest un- underachiever in the 2019 season. Though they still m- did make it into the playoffs as a 7C before suffering an early playoff exit. And then we got NYCFC, who of course, I think that was the only time in their five-year existence that they actually finished first in the Eastern Conference. That was also a, a relatively good team too. But as it is kind of the case, before NYCFC win, finally end the narrative to win MLS Cup, they weren't able to reach reach past uh, I think the second round during that season, and then the very next year they they suffer uh, definitely a, a bit of a setback by finishing fifth in the standings, which now brings us to the 2020 season when Sporting KC of course finished at the top of the Western Conference, and they p- probably should have finished at the top of the Western Conference this year too because th- down the stretch they were on the driver's seat, but ultimately they had to to settle for uh, not second place in the standings. I actually got that one wrong because I know second place is the Seattle Sounders. I did a moving forward series on them earlier, but they finished third in in the standings. Whereas the Philadelphia Union, they of course were the Supporters Shield winner in the 2020 season and the very next year, you know, despite the fact that they did have had a bit of a setback, especially in the middle part of the season. They end up finishing second in the standings and, and made a good run in the playoffs. Which now brings us to present day in 2021, where we have the Colorado Rapids unexpectedly winning the the Western Conference title in the regular season and finish at the top spot. And it's going to be interesting to see how the Rapids are going to do next year. I mean, I know some people might say the the Rapids might might fall off a little bit, but who knows? I mean, they have a have a decent team where they could potentially should still able to make it to the playoffs. And then you got the New England Revolution, who of course was the supporter shield winner. I've got to put. The SS name up there, so I'm just gonna do that, not to kind of disrespect the refs who had had the the best regular season, not only in their franchise history but any team in MLS history, with them breaking LAFC mark of the most points per season. But there's also the question mark of how they're gonna do upcoming this year, especially the fact that they're gonna be losing some of their 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 key players because they're they're going to sell them off to Europe. But yeah, there you have it. That is pretty much it. Looking at all the teams that finished at the top of it, of the Western Conference and Eastern Conference for the past 10 years. And look how they're going to do next season. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of this video. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you guys leave a like. Smash the subscribe button. And yeah, I of course will see you guys next time.